Well, greetings friends around the world. Uh, for some time I've wanted to defend once again the true doctrine of the place of safety because fairly recently in one of the largest uh, churches of God out there, it might be even the largest one, but nevertheless in one of the largest there was a sermon delivered by a person who claimed that uh, he was looking forward for the whole universe to be the place of safety, and he also claimed that physical place of safety is not in Scripture. Now, before I address that, that the physical place of safety is supposedly not in Scripture, he also made several comments about how people were obsessed in the past with the place of safety and how that doctrine might have caused certain things in the Church of God in the past, in the 20th century. Now, I do agree that obsession with the place of safety is not going to get anyone into the place of safety. I do agree that the uh, obsession with the place of safety was wrong and it was uh, it was certainly not beneficial to the believers in the last century. However, the fact that people may have missteps, mishaps, or be obsessed with a doctrine or have some negative consequences as a result of their obsession with a doctrine, does not mean that that doctrine is not true. It does not mean that that doctrine is not right. It does not mean that that doctrine is not found in the Bible. So, yes, in the past people were perhaps very much obsessed with the place of safety, but I would have to say, regardless of that, in the past, in the last century, that the, the Church of God would always put good emphasis on a such a doctrine because it was always a constant reminder to the people that lest we escape all into the place of safety, we are not going to be spared in a, uh, physically. Our physical lives are not going to be spared. Also, the physical lives of our children, our, I mean, uh, children who are dependent on us, on the adults, were not going to be spared. So, the uh, teaching on the place of safety, emphasis on the importance of the place of safety was right. The fact that people could perhaps took that doctrine perhaps too far and they, they may have under misunderstood certain things does not change the, 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 the fact that the doctrine was true and right. And even more so now that we are ever closer to the return of Jesus Christ and we are marching towards the great tribulation. Ever more so even now in this age and day, in this day and age, in this time of the church, in this Laodicean age in which the church finds itself, we are to yet once again emphasize and explain the doctrine of the place of safety uh, and its significance and its need. People usually tend to forget, in the last century they would forget what would get us into the place of safety. Well, Jesus Christ mentioned, as you know, he said to us to watch and pray that we be accounted worthy to escape all those horrible things uh, coming and that we may stand before the Son of Man. So watch and pray to be accounted worthy. So what will, is going to get us into the place of safety is not our constant readiness, our suitcases being filled with all the necessities, our passports be getting sorted, being sorted out, you know, and ready for, for a flight, for, a, for escape, for travel. What is going to get us? Now, of course, we need to have the passports in order. Yes, we need to be always alert and know what would be the, the, the most important and the most relevant and uh, the, uh, the things that we could take that, that would be the things of priority. Yes, we are to be aware of that, but that does not mean that we are to be obsessed with that. And we need to keep being reminded and be obsessed if with anything. We need to be obsessed with the idea that we are to be accounted worthy to escape. Now, perhaps uh, this phrase of Jesus Christ to be accounted worthy, perhaps it does, it does uh, demand some uh, deeper study and perhaps even a, a message on its own. Yes, I would agree with that as well. But the fact is that we know that what will get us into the place of safety primarily is that we are that we are to be accounted worthy. And in order to be accounted worthy, we need to, of course, be participating in the work of God today in spreading the good news. And we also know of all the seven church eras, the sixth one, the Philadelphian one, is promised that it would be it would be uh, spared the trials and the trying out that is going to come upon the whole world. That's in uh, in uh, Revelation chapter three, I believe, in verse ten. I think it would be. Uh, let's let's check it. Uh, uh, instead of King James version, let me just take some uh, literal standard version. It might be it might be might be more understandable. 
uh, old King James is a little bit archaic anyway. So now let us let us check uh, Revelation 3:10. Here it is, a uh, literal translation, literal standard. Is it literal standard? Let's see. It's a literal standard version. It says, "Because you, Philadelphians, you have kept the word of my endurance, I also will keep you from the hour of the trial." That is about of the trial. So the trial is coming is the great tribulation that is about to come on all the world to try those dwelling on the earth. And then verse 11, as behold, I come quickly, behold, beholding fast that which you have, that no one may receive your garland or that no one may take away your crown. So this is in Revelation 3, 10 and 11. So therefore we know that to be accounted worthy, we among other things need to be doing the work of God and it is the preaching of the gospel because uh, before the Philadelphia and today before Philadelphia, before the Philadelphia remnant, where, where, wherever it might be, and it might be scattered, of course, all over those various churches, uh, the... Um, the Philadelphians are told in verse 7, Revelation 3 verse 7, that the Holy One who is addressing them, the true one having the key of David, the one opening and no one shut, will shut and shutting and no one opens, he says that he knows in verse 8 our works. And he says, Behold, I have set before you a door having been open, and which no one is able to shut it, because you have little power, so there are there are very, uh, there is a little number, small number of Philadelphians. You'll have little power and yet, yet have kept my word and have not denied my name. So they endure, they're faithful, you see. Because of their faithfulness, the door is being opened before them. And uh, why is the door being opened? Well, the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, when he was mentioning from, when he had a vision that he, he needed to go down to Macedonia and help those who were there, he mentions also in, 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 in the book of Acts as well as in his epistle, I think, I believe, was it to Colossians? But in one of his epistles, he does mention the door being opened for him to spread the good news. So therefore, so now we understand that in order to be, in order to be, uh, wor uh, worthy, that we be accounted worthy, we need to have endurance, we need to endure and be faithful in the true doctrines, regardless of the ridicule of the world, uh, regardless of how unpopular all of that is, so that's number one. Number two is, we'll have the open doors in various ways, we're seeing more and more as the time goes on that the, uh, that a Philadelphia remnant that I'm associated with is having uh, radio doors being open, which is great because through radio we've been able to be detached from these control censoring uh, government controlled television networks and we've been able now through radio to be reaching who knows how many people and we could through radio we could possibly even reach the whole world because nowadays we do have internet and the whole world is increasingly having internet so we have internet radios and uh, shortwave radios that we can also utilize for the purpose of spreading the good news of the coming kingdom of God on this to this earth so therefore Philadelphians those who will be accounted worthy to escape they have to be of course to be accounted worthy they have open door they have to be enduring faithfully which means they have to also keep you know, of course keep praying keep uh, occasionally fasting they have to be keep uh, they have to keep reading the bible and studying their bible and getting educated for the role in the world to come and they have to be accounted worthy of course by having by allowing the holy spirit in them uh, to be zealous to be zealous christians for the work but also zealous for the change of their character uh, so that's exactly what we can just see uh, why and who is going to be accounted worthy. So whether you have your passports sorted out or not, you should have one. Whether you have your priorities in your mind, what you should be taking with you once the the, the moment to flee comes, that's uh, another good thing, but we are not to be obsessed with those. We're to be focusing on getting to be accounted worthy. So uh, we're to focusing on what are the, on the qualities of those that will be accounted worthy to escape. So we see now in the Christ's message to Philadelphia that, you know, their quality is that they, they have little strength, but they're not discouraged. They also have, uh, you know, uh, they have not a denied uh, name. They're known as zealous Christians. They're not known as fanatics, but they're known as zealous Christians who believe and trust in God and live by faith and not by sight. And they have before them an open door. And as the result in verse 10, they're promised, they're promised to be uh, kept from the hour of the trial, meaning the great tribulation. 
And when I say the Great Tribulation, I'm not really sure that many of you in the Western world are very aware what that Great Tribulation does does entail. Uh, I'm afraid that's one of the problems of the... Uh, I'm coming to realize more and more, actually, that's one of the problems of the churches of Laodicea. Because in Revelation 3.14... He says to the messenger of the assembly of the Laodiceans, it says Laodiceans in, uh, in plural here, here, uh, in, in this uh, noun. However, in the original text, in the original, uh, in the original text, we have actually, uh, it doesn't say, uh, church of Laodiceans. He says churches of the Laodiceans. So, uh, churches, which means, we do have various churches who claim to be churches of God. They do keep the Ten Commandments. And they do have the testimony of Jesus Christ because they have, uh, even though many prophetic errors in their understanding, at least they do have uh, some idea of the of the prophecy because the spirit of Christ is the uh, spirit of prophecy. So uh, they do have an idea about Christ's coming and they've got some idea about what should precede his coming. So they keep the Ten Commandments and therefore we, you know, therefore they do qualify to be the uh, the people of God, but they are lukewarm. You see, they're lukewarm in in, in everything. They're lukewarm in. Uh, that's why Jesus Christ says says to them, He is the faithful and true witness. They're not really faithful. They would they they're they're, they're kind of uh, living with the world in some kind of symbiotic uh, communion. They they still love the world. They're still not really ready to make a total commitment to God. Uh, they sit on the fence, you might say. Uh, they're kind of lukewarm in the sense that, you know, whether there'll be a door open here or a door open there for preaching the gospel, they're not really, they're not really excited about it. They're not really excited about the truth because they would much rather, if they could somehow compromise that truth with the world and they do it in their own lives and therefore they are becoming very, becoming, uh, lukewarm. Yes, it's becoming, you know, one does not really, is not really a lukewarm Christian once he, Starts learning the, the the truth and 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 getting close to God and 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 becoming converted. No, you become lukewarm. You become lukewarm over the time because oh well, this teaching. Oh, how can I live like this? What will people say? Oh no, I would look just bad if I if I if I if I believe this. A prayer, they just neglect prayer. You know, oh praying. Oh, it's do I have to do it really in the morning? Do I have to get up in the morning? You know, and, and pray. Do I have to? Do I have to be fasting? Do I have to be doing this? Do I have to be doing that? And so on and so forth. Then Christ says in verse Revelation three, verse fifteen, and He knows He knows their works. Their works and their works are just lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. So they're not really neither here nor there. They're not cold like cold for the truth, like people in the world are. But they're not really that hot, really hot, zealous for the truth as uh, as they should be. They're not hot. They're not zestos. That's the Greek word, which means boiled. That is by implication, calid, figuratively fervent. You know, fervent. So they're not really fervent. You know, they're not either cold. Cold is uh, psukros, which means chilly. Uh, so literally or figuratively cold, they're obviously figuratively cold when it comes to the spiritual truth, and they're not zestos, meaning boiled, uh, uh, fervent, you know, for the truth. They show no fervency, they're kind of, they're kind of, uh, how to explain, how to really explain that, they're kind of, um, indifferent, let's, let, let, let's use that, that, that word. So they're lukewarm, they're indifferent, you know, they're not really totally cold, but they're, 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 they're total zeal for the truth, for the way of life, for Christ's coming. It's, it, it's getting ever, ever colder. And, uh, unless Jesus Christ throws them into great tribulation, they were, they're just going to be, uh, go to totally cold and they are going to lose their salvation. Now I said, I need to explain to you what the great tribulation is. Uh, the great tribulation is mentioned as Jacob's trouble. So it's trouble on the house of Jacob. And as you know, Jacob is the son of Abraham and Isaac. And as you know, he had 12 sons. So therefore, uh, his 12 sons today are going to have that, that, uh, trouble, uh, trouble or the great tribulation. Jesus Christ calls that in the, in the gospels, the great tribulation. Now I'm afraid, brethren, that many people do not understand what a great tribulation is. And that is among other things why they get lukewarm and they get very cold. You know, they don't believe what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ says in the Gospels very clearly that the Great Tribulation will be something worse, something that exceeds by horrors and, 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 and terrors all the things we have ever known. All the things we have ever known. Now, why? what does he mean? Well, I guess 
It will be such a, such a time of, of, of shortage of everything. It will be such a persecution. It will be such a martyrdom of people. That, 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 that's, that's unimaginable. We cannot really imagine all of that. You know, many of you cannot imagine United States of America being defeated by a foreign power. Many of you cannot imagine uh, an occupying forces marching through London. Many of you cannot even fathom Can- Canberra and Sydney and Melbourne being destroyed by a blitzkrieg sudden attack uh, by nuclear 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 bomb. Many of you cannot even envision your New Zealand being trampled by the enemies. But brethren, that's exactly what it is. Because those countries that I mentioned are the descendants of the house of Jacob. And Jacob is one of J- uh, the house of Joseph as well. And, and Joseph is one of Jacob's son. So the Jacob's trouble mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7 is actually the great tribulation. Uh, uh, the great tribulation, when you read also what it says in, 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 in Deuteronomy 28, when you read about Leviticus 26, it's a foreign power. That foreign power will be will be, it will come swift as an eagle. There is only two nations in Europe that do have eagle on their flags. It's Germany and it's Austria. Friends, German power is going to come. Of course, with all of its satellites, European satellites. So, United States of Europe, led by Germany, is the power that is going to destroy uh, the Israelites by flesh, those who are by flesh. Destroy. According to Ezekiel chapter 6 and chapter 5, only 10% of British and Americans and Canadians and New Zealanders and Australians will survive. Do you know that? Yes, there is indication only 10%. Yes, we are supposed to give 10% of our wages and of our income to the, for the, for the work of God. Well, 10% of the house of Israel or the leading nations, they're leading nations in the house of Israel, they're they're, they are descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh. The leading nations, 10% will survive. What does that mean? That means that 90% of those nations are going to be murdered, massacred, destroyed. Your lands are going to be completely destroyed, brethren. The Laodiceans do not believe that. The Laodiceans cannot imagine, they cannot fathom that somebody is going to destroy their beautiful lands. But that's what the Great Tribulation does imply. A total destruction of your states. No longer will we have the United States of America. No longer there will be Great Britain. And no longer there will be Australia, Canada and New Zealand. They will be completely destroyed. And 90% of their population murdered. Those people will fall by either famine or uh, 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 disease or invasion. And then whoever survives will be taken captive. The Great Tribulation means captivity as well. The, the word captivity, I'm not sure that I'm, I, I'm not sure that many of you would understand what it is. Well, just remember, remember what the Nazi Germany and its satellites did to the Jewish people in the Second World War. And yes, instead of instead of uh, 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 avoiding to to face with those things, go and research it. Everything is on the internet. Go and type out in your Google death camps. Slave labor camps, concentration camps. We usually call them concentration camps. Many of those camps are not concentration camps, but the death camps. People are concentrated to be murdered, to be annihilated in gas chambers and in all other various gruesome ways. Friends, that's what the Great Tribulation is all about. It is repetition of history, but it will be much worse. Six million Jews murdered were murdered in the Second World War. But imagine 90% of all Americans murdered in the Great Tribulation. 90% of British Isles murdered in the Great Tribulation. 90% of Canadians. 90% of New Zealanders. 90% of Australians. Just see the proportion of suffering, the proportion of, 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 of death. And those who are not murdered will be slaves. They'll be, you know, sla- uh, uh, captivity means slave labor. Under the, under the supervising capos, who will be like those in Egypt that were torturing Egypt, uh, they were torturing the Israelites. Children will be separated from their parents and die in starvation in, in, in concentration camps or sent to the gas chambers because they are useless for work. Yes, I'm telling you the German mentality. Go and research it if you don't know. They've got several, you've got, I've got several, several, uh, 
messages here on this channel about Germany, about the German mindset, about German philosophy and ideology. But you don't believe it because you don't believe the words of Jesus Christ who told us and tells us even now because it's the living word of God. He tells us that the great tribulation will be the worst time in human history. Oh, because, but because you cannot imagine many of you destruction of your lands, you just say, oh well, oh well. He probably doesn't mean it will be that bad. Yes, he means it will be that bad. Because the, the sins, the mounting sins of you, the house of Israel, does deserve that. So the, the physical nations of Israel, those by flesh, will be enslaved. Those of you who will be taken into captivity will be in slave labor camps. Treated like dirt. Exploited to the, to the maximum. Famished by the lack of food. Your children will be taken away from you and gas chambered and murdered. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, why do you tell us those negative things? Because those things are reality. They happened in the last century. And the Bible is duality in prophecy. The Bible tells us that what happened once will happen again. That's what is waiting for you, O house of Israel, by flesh. Why? Because you live in unrepentant state of mind. Because you're rebellious against God. And your rebellion we could feel now this past weekend here in Belgrade, the capital of Serbia, when by the pressure of all of you, the Serbian government caved in and allowed the so-called pride, Euro pride, you know. How terrible. Among other things. But there is another sin that I'm coming to realize more and more that you have. You people of Israel, people of modern Israel, I mean the house of Israel, you Anglo-Saxon nations, the leading nations, you have another grave sins. Because you know what is a true religion. You know what is a true day of rest. You know what are the true holidays, but you keep ignoring that. You just, you just wave your hands and, 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 and dismiss, dismiss. You have those that dismissed, uh, gestures saying, we don't care. We want to be pagans. You want to be pagans? Yes. Yes, you do. You know that Christmas is not the day when Jesus Christ was born. Adam Clark, even even him, who was a Protestant uh, uh, commentator, gave you a, a reasonable explanation why. You know that oh, you know that Easter is also not a Christian holiday. You know that it's all sun god. You have got so much materials, so much scholarly works that do testify to you what the true religion is, but you couldn't care less. You just dismiss it all. Because you want to be pagans. Well, you'll get the worst of all the pagans coming to you, Europeans, led by Germans. And then, because you did not want to serve God with true religion, you're going to experience how it is to be enslaved, exploited, hated, murdered, and annihilated by real pagans. Who will be so much paganized that they'll be, they'll be satanic, they'll be having this satanic drive. To murder you, torture you, and, and misuse you in every imaginable way. But no, you cannot imagine that. And you think, well, Christ just didn't mean it. It would be that bad. Yes, he meant it. It would be that bad. It would be exactly that bad. It would be even worse than we can even imagine right now. I'm sure about it. But you don't believe it. You don't believe Christ. You, 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 believe, you don't believe that he's, he means what he says to the point that he remains outside and he knocks on your door. Asking to come in, pleading with you to come in to let him in. So that he could, you know, he could sup with you, that he could, he could allow you to sit on the throne of his father, as he sat on the throne of his father as well, and won over death. And because of your lovely, 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 and, 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 and a lukewarm life, that you enjoy all the commodities of this life because you did not sacrifice even for the work of God, well, because of that, Jesus Christ is going to indeed test you in the fire. He tells you, you know, keep, he tells you, uh, he tells those Laodiceans, Laodicean churches that is, Laodicean churches of God, he tells them to buy, uh, gold, gold tried with fire, meaning that they will be thrown into that great tribulation. So the great tribulation means not only the terrible martyrdom and holocaust of the house of Israel, including again the house of Judah, it will be now the Holocaust on a worldwide scale. But there is another Holocaust as well. Another genocide, if you wish. The Great Tribulation does imply that uh, lukewarm Christians 
of all ethnic origins, of all walks of life, wherever they might be, will be murdered. They'll be, you know, the, 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 the European power is going to be ordering other governments to deport such Christians to their concentration and death camps. So regardless whether you live in the Dominican Republic or whether you'll be living in whatever part of the world, if you are a lukewarm Christian, the martyrdom is there. A terrible martyrdom. And from Revelation 20 and verse 4, we can see there's only once that Greek word is used for beheading. Guillotine is going to become back into fashion. Brethren, that is what the great tribulation does imply. It's not like tribulation, uh, a tribulation like any tribulation. It is the greatest, the most horrible time in human history and implies genocide, genocide of many lukewarm Christians and also the uh, genocide of the house of Judah, Holocaust, another Holocaust and genocide against the house of Israel after flesh. But because you cannot imagine your countries being invaded by Germany, you think, well, you just dismiss what the Church of God, what the, what the Philadelphia remnant preaches to you. You just dismiss it saying, oh, no, that can happen. That cannot happen to us. Jesus Christ really didn't mean it was that bad. Yes, he meant it was that bad. So the Great Tribulation is for those who are going to be lukewarm, for those who want to be zealous, those who are, those who want to be uh, preaching and, 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 and teaching nations, those who want to be qualifying for the first resurrection without having to go through martyrdom, those who will be spared from the hour of trial, and those who will stay faithful regardless of their small number, well, for them, what is reserved is that they will be spared from the trial and the trial that comes to the whole world, and that they will be accounted worthy, obviously, to escape all those horrible things coming. All right, so I just wanted to make clear about these things because I have, I, I, I feel that Laodiceans in general have problem understanding, accepting, and realizing how terrible, how bad, how bad, how worse, how awful the Great Tribulation will be. Christ says that will be a time that has never happened. And he even warns us that unless those days will be shortened, no flesh would stay alive. When he says no flesh, he means no human flesh, no animal flesh. The whole world would be annihilated, you see. That's what Christ means. That is the great tribulation. But in the meantime, those who will be really annihilated will be the members of the, by flesh of the house of Israel today, and the lukewarm Christians who are part of various churches of God, who really do not really want to practice what Christ gave us as a commandment. Uh, he's Logos, he's the Word, he's a spokesman of the God family, he's a spokesman of God the Father. He brought to us from heaven the good news. He brought it, the Father sent the good news of the coming kingdom of God, coming rule of God over the earth through Jesus Christ to all of us here. He said that was Christ's gospel and he said that uh, the uh, as the result of hearing that gospel, we are to repent and believe the gospel. We are to repent and to enter into the uh, covenant with the eternal. That's what it is. Now, I mentioned that this preacher from one of those major churches of God mentioned how there is no physical place of safety. Oh, he would love to. He mentions he would love to point out uh, the, the physical place of safety in Scripture, but it is not in Scripture. Well, I'm not sure what Scripture does he read, but... Uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 12, in Revelation chapter 12 and in verse 14, let's read American Standard Version. He says, there is no physical place of safety. Well, how do you explain then to us, dear, dear friends, how do you explain to us this, this uh, verse 14 in Revelation 12? And they were given to the woman the two wings of the great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Really incredible. How can you now tell me that there is no place? We have just read the place. Let me read King James Version. And to the woman, 
the woman, a woman is always a symbol, symbol of the church, by the way. So that the woman to the true church or to the Philadelphia remnant of that true church were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. By the way, the word wilderness is eremos. And it is lonesome by implication waste. And why does a woman is, needs to fly to wilderness? Into what? Into her place. Her place, the word Greek is topos. From the word topos we get toponyms. What is toponym? Well, it's a physical place, location, a spot. Alright, a spot location. So, this preacher who said that there is no physical place of safety in the Bible has got it wrong. Yes, there is. So, there is a physical place of safety. It is in the wilderness. And the woman is going to be nourished there for time, times and half a time. This is the time period that is mentioned also in the book of Daniel. And those are three and a half years just prior to the return of Jesus Christ. In those three and a half years will be, uh, the great tribulation will be there and it will be a total martyrdom of lukewarm Christians and sin, sinful, rebellious house of Israel by flesh. And so, topos, the woman, those who will be accounted worthy, those who have open door before them to preach the good news, those who are of little strength, those who endure and have not denied the name of their father, the name of Jesus Christ, those who do not deny that they are true Christians, well, brethren, those are be, uh, they are going to be uh, accounted worthy to escape. Well, will they escape? Well, obviously, to wilderness, into their place, topos. So, is there a physical place of safety in the scripture? Yes, there is. And in fact, I find it very interesting, some comments on, uh, on this, uh, on this, uh, the, this place of safety. It's very interesting. Uh, I think some, some commentators I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to quote. I think it was Albert Barnes that really impressed me with his comment. That she might fly into the wilderness. There is, there is here a more full description of what is briefly stated in Revelation 12, 6. 12, 6 says, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place, here is again the word place, topos, prepared of God that she, that they, she would, uh, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred three score days, one thousand two hundred and sixty days, or times, uh, time, times and half a time. Three and a half years. So there is again the place, topos, in the wilderness, obviously. Look, it's being prepared. So if that place is going to be ready for the woman, then it means, it means that right now, on this earth, on this planet, there is a topos, there is a toponym that is being prepared for the woman. Isn't that, does that make logical sense? So here it is a, a better description, fuller of this Revelation 12.6. The wilderness or desert is often often represented as a place of safety from pursuers. Albert Barnes, place of safety. Thus David is represent, rep, represented as fleeing into the wilderness from the persecution of Saul. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 23. Elijah also in 1 Kings 19 fled into the wilderness from the persecution of Jezebel. The simple idea here is that the church, in the opposition which would come upon it, would find a refuge. Into her place, Barnes explains, a place appointed for her that is a place where she could be saved, where she is nourished. The word rendered here is trefo, which occurs also in Revelation 12, 6, and which is there rendered feed. It means to feed, nurse, or nourish as the young animals. That is to sustain by proper food. The mention here is that the church will be kept alive. Those who flee, those who are counted worthy, they'll be kept alive. But those who are not, those who are lukewarm, will have to buy the gold refined in fire. They'll have to go to the great tribulation and lose their lives. Because they're right now living their wonderful lives. These various churches of God. They care more about money. They care more about their pension funds. They care about these funds and that. They don't want to go into the third world to preach the gospel because they don't want to give be, be giving funds for that. No, they want to keep funds for themselves. They preach only to basically America and those well-off countries because they count that they would be having a good income from potential believers in those countries. Yes, that's what it is. Lukewarmness. 
So the church will be kept alive. It is not intended mentioned by whom this will be done, but it is evident implied that it would be by God, of course. During this long period in which the church would be in obscurity, it would be, it would not be suffered to become extinct. And that's exactly what it is. The church, friends, European power is coming to destroy the church. They hate the truth. Europe has always been a pagan continent. The very name Europe and mythology associated with it just testifies how pagan it is. It hates the free world. It does not want freedom of religion. Europe has never had freedom of religion. Do you realize that? There was only one always dominant religion in the West, Roman Catholicism, in the East, uh, Greek Orthodox Church, and that's it. There is no real freedom. Get it now. That power is coming to enslave you. And because those of you who are of the physical house of Israel, most of you are Protestants, except for France, they are going to be tormenting you and pushing you to accept their religion. Some of you might, I don't know. But in any way, for a time and times and half a time, Albert Bann says a year, two years and half a year. That is 42 months. As the notes on Revelation 11 two say, the Revelation 11 speaks about the two witnesses in Jerusalem and measuring the temple. So, Albert Barnes, Barnes incredibly good comment, commentary on the place of safety. Physical place of safety, yes, as described in the Bible. I also find very interesting the summarized Bible comments. Uh, they're very interesting because they actually touch upon what I mentioned to you, what the Great Tribulation will be. The Great Tribulation is the wrath of Satan. Satan hates the Church of God. Satan hates the truth of God. Satan hates people of God, either those who are begotten by the Spirit, they're people of God, or those who are by flesh, those who are physically still descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the summarized Bible says that the woman clothed with the sun in this chapter 12 of Revelation is actually Israel, the, 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 the house of Israel. Yes, indeed. Satan drawing the stars, the man-child Christ caught up to the throne. The archangel, he was caught up to the throne, and of course he escaped the death because Satan wanted to kill him anyway. The archangel of, and his angels fighting Satan. Satan and Israel in the Great Tribulation. And then, conclusions. Israel, out of which came the Messiah, who was rejected, will in the midst of the Great Tribulation suffer terrible anguish because of him and will be subjected to terrors of Satan himself, who will then be unrestrained and knowing that he, he has but a short time. However, those whom, whom uh, God shall seal of Israel will be brought through those terrible days. Though, though many will suffer martyrdom, but they will then die willingly for him, acknowledging him their king, their sacrifice, and their lord. So, yes, because they're lukewarm now, they'll have to be showing their, 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 their zeal in this great tribulation to come. So, in any case, we have established that a part of the church, those who have little strength, those who have open door, those who enthusiastically with zeal go through those open door, those who sacrifice part of their incomes, part of their lives, Part of their spiritual sacrifices like prayers for the work of God, yes, they have a good chance to be accounted worthy to escape all those horrible things that Jesus Christ said are coming upon the earth. And those the most horrible of all of the things ever will be, Jesus Christ says, the great tribulation. The Laodiceans obviously don't believe that. So contrary to what this one of these greatest churches of God mentioned, Yes, there is a physical place of safety. We find in Revelation 12 and in verse 14. There is a physical place of safety and I've just explained what it is. If we do not make it to that place of safety, you can count on the martyrdom uh, wherever you might be. Or if you are a descendant, direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, if you are Israel by flesh, you can see your country is destroyed completely. And those who survive in the Great Tribulation, there is a prophesied second exodus, they will again be brought not back to their countries, they will be completely destroyed, they will be, br be brought back to their original country to which God took them and brought them when he delivered them out of the land of Egypt. So they're going to be coming to the Middle East and then 
they will, you know, survive the horrible great tribulation, the most horrible of all. They will be willing to obviously repent those who survive, to submit to God, and to experience the great blessings out of that. And one more thing that I want to mention about this, not this preacher, I've uh, hidden his name as you see, because it's not him that is important, it is the uh, doctrine that he preached. And sadly, this is not the first time that the place of safety is being attacked. In the last century, it was being attacked by Gardner Ted Armstrong, the very son of Herbert Armstrong. And now we see that one of the largest churches of God out there has attacked the place of safety. That church numbers thousands of members, which does mean that, of course, those thousands of members are going to be taught that there is no physical place of safety. And if there is no physical place of safety, they will not be able to know when to escape to that place of safety, to that topos to the top on him and they'll stay behind when the tribulation starts and they'll be martyred. But one more thing that I need to mention is that really kind of bothered me for a while. Now, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, until recently, the, the president of that church was a person who boasts of his membership in a Rotary Club. Now, I'm not sure, friends, those of you around the world, what do you think? But as far as we know here in this country, Rotary Clubs are associated with Masonry. In fact, they're like, uh, uh, they're like uh, uh, an organization, uh, an association of various individuals. And those who come into the Rotary Club, they're being kind of assessed and considered by the Masons for potentially joining Masonry. Masonry. So you might say that the... Uh, Rotary clubs are like external affiliations of masonry. If you don't know anything about masonry, please send me an email. I'll send you appropriate material about masonry. Well, this person, because this is a church of God, this person who was a long time, long, 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 long time into the ministry should know who the masons are. But perhaps he didn't know that the uh, Rotary club members are like recruiting ground for future masons. Until recently, that person was part uh, was not part, but only the but also the the highest part, the president of that very big, huge Church of God. So until recently, now nowadays he's no longer president. He uses Rotary Club, you know, for his humanitarian activities. But I'm not sure that he realizes that being being part of the Rotary Club that that's something that is not really for true Christians because of the uh, ties of the Rotary Clubs to the Masonry. But you see to how, uh, to what kind of lukewarm state of mind people can, can come when they say, when they say that, uh, 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 you know, uh, when they say that there is, uh, there is no place of safety, when they don't realize the connection between masonry and rotary clubs, when they just, you know, they, they, they just care about the humanitarian aid, which is fine, but not really about the strong preaching of the gospel around the whole world. So it is so sad. It says for it says for the Laodiceans that they are blind. You are blind, among other things. When I took to, when I uh, checked the original Greek, the blind it meant uh, uh, literally, physically, or mentally. The Laodiceans are mentally blind now. They uh, laugh at the idea of the place of safety. They uh, mock that idea, uh, and they will help obviously the persecution of the Philadelphia remnant. If you take and uh, listen to my uh, my message uh, called uh, when the uh, let me just check what is the exact title of the message on my channel. That message is precisely called. It is in English, of course, and uh, it is called "When the Days That Begin the End Come." In that message, you'll see how the Laodiceans will help the world persecute the Philadelphia remnant, those who believe in the place of safety and going into the place of safety. So, my dear friends, who want those of you who want to be accounted worthy, be prepared that even those who were until yesterday your brethren, and to the mention who is in the part of the Rotary Club, I used to be a good friend of that person, and many others who are associated with him, be prepared that those until yesterday brethren, lukewarm, Laodicean churches of God, are going to be laughing off 
uh, laughing their heads off at your idea, at your escape. They're going to be mocking you and they're going to disown you and say, oh no, I don't believe like those fan fanatics. Oh yes, they're called the Church of God, but no, they're not like us. We are not going to go into any place of safety because there is no need for a place. There is no place of safety in the Bible. There is no place of safety in this world. They're just fanatics. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just giving us the bad name. So they'll be persecuting you. And they might also help kick you out of your countries so that you just go as quicker as possible. Brethren, be prepared for that. I'm telling you things from the Bible. I'm not telling you the figments of my imagination. So, we see that the churches of God have, no, none of them preach the, the place of safety. And when they preach, they preach that there is no physical place of safety in the Bible. So, therefore, be prepared for all of those things that I've been telling you. So, we live in this Laodicean, dominant Laodicean church age. We are going to be mocked and maligned by our brethren or those who were until yesterday close to us in these various churches of God. And yes, there is physical place of safety. Topos. It is in the wilderness. And Revelation 12 tells us that it is being prepared now for the woman, the church, to flee and to escape to that place where she will be three and a half years protected supernaturally and nourished and away from Satan and no harm will be uh, will be done to that church and the church will not be not be extinct. That is, it will not be annihilated. Those who are there will wait. They are the ones that the Apostle Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 15 where he says that first the dead will rise in Christ and then those who are alive those who are alive, they, to be alive you have to be in the place of safety, otherwise you will be extinct in the world. So those who are alive will then be changed into from mortality into immortality. And then, you know, they're all going to meet the Lord in the air and then come down with Him. And in Zechariah 14 we read, we read how they're going to defeat Satan's armies and then how they're going to be bringing the remnant of Israel, physical Israel, to the uh, promised land. And then we read how they'll be ruling, being kings and priests, and how they're going to be bringing again the uh, restoration of this earth. In any case, when you hear a heresy like, there is no physical place of safety in the scripture, please just remember what is yet written in the Bible. So yes, there is a physical place of safety indeed. Well, friends, stay zealous. If you're lukewarm, well, pray to God to give you zeal. Stay zealous. Keep being repentant. Keep believing the good news. Keep supporting the work of God. And keep in mind always, we're not to be obsessed with the place of safety. We are to be aware of the qualities in those people that will be taken into the place of safety. And keep in mind, yes, there is a physical place of safety. It's called in Greek topos, toponym. It is located in the wilderness.